This is Cybert signing in to the 2021 Championship Series 1v1 Finals for the last time on Tournament Odyssey in the South as the Green GDI fighting his way through so many rounds and so many close series. This is Green Zero. And in the north as the red, now playing Scrim. Blasting through almost every series, every round, this is Bike Rush Owns. Will Bike Rush be in control of this series from beginning to end, or will the power of GDI under the control of Green Zero cause Bike Rush to waver? maybe to falter and maybe even to fall. If you have not seen the semifinals, these two guys had very different paths through their opponents. Bike Rush owns blasting drive to bits, 4-0 bribe. Drive going on to the bronze match, which if you haven't seen is, is worth checking out. Uh, not all of the games are great, but you should check out the series nonetheless. A little bit of an anti-scout from Green Zero. Wow. What? Wait, what? Okay. So, <laughs> Bike snuck out. I was not expecting that. Bike snuck out an additional engineer to capture this expansion point over at Green Zero's third field. What in the world he is going to do with that, I don't even know. Uh, check out the third place matches, is what I was trying to say. And, and Green Zero, if you haven't seen his semi-final, I mean, you're here in the finals, so that's your fault. But his series versus Futurama back and not Futurama, that was in the quarters. Uh, his series versus Eclipse back and forth, one and the other. A good mix of macro games and some cheesy games. And a good, you know, a lot of standard play, but a good mix of strategies overall. And we got to really see how Green Zero plays GDI. I fully expected Bike Rush Owns to be playing Nod this entire final series. Nod is sort of his bread and butter, but of course, Bike Rush Owns is good with all factions. Everyone can kind of, oh, Green Zero actually sees this. He realizes it. Now he sees that there's also nothing here. So, I mean, we talked about this in the last game, in the last series. Green Zero almost always has those riflemen around the map here and there and everywhere. Scouting is something that he does quite well. Double Watchtower on the defense. Couple of Seeker Tanks here trying to poke in. One goes down, and Green Zero is going to keep an eye on that expansion point. A, a uh, portal drops one Descent Squad, and the Pitbull gets eliminated. Biker Shones is now going to be looking potentially for another opening and another option for his Seeker Tanks to poke in, but the door is closed, the way is shut, and the Predator Tank is standing guard. Watchtower gets a kill on the Buzzer Hive as on the Buzzer Squad as well. A couple of Rocket Squads here. No Catalyst Missile to worry about, so placing your refineries close isn't a big deal. I'm still so confused about this expansion point. I'm so curious as to if it will ever play a role or if Bike Rochon's accidentally clicked Engineer three times, or rather slapped the F3 key three times instead of just two times. But then why wouldn't you go for the defensive tower? I genuinely don't know. Okay, it's going to be descents. It's portals and descents way down in the south. When does Green Zero realize this? When does he see it? No time soon. He does actually have riflemen, and he's got his own engineer potentially to take the defensive tower or to take back that expansion point just to deny Bike Rush Owns. But either way, we'll see if this one actually decides it or if it's just a little bit of a sidestep on our story of this game. This is a decent amount of descents. He is still keeping the portal around, getting two more descents. So this is a bit of a parade push. He's pressuring this, and look at that green zero with three riflemen right at the perfect time. Sneaks in there, and he's going to be able to jump on those descents, completely stonewalling Bike Rush Owns. He's going to get the kill on several descent squads before they finally close the distance and clean up the riflemen. The thing about descents is they're anti-vehicle and building right but of course if they can get up close and personal with those rifleman squads they will kill them another engineer
Pioneer heading out for by Groshones? Is it for the expansion point or is it for the defensive tower? I honestly have no idea. No additional APCs it looks like being added on. It's just Predator tanks. So these descents have an opportunity, but it's not much of an opportunity. Great move there by Green Zero. Who would have thought the defensive wall of Harvesters gathering them all together so their guns can shred the descents would be the right call, but it absolutely was the Watchtower helping out as well. But I love that move by Green Zero, grouping all of his Harvesters together and then using their guns to punch right through those descents. It's not the defensive tower. Bike Roshones is actually going for the expansion point. Both expansion points. What an unusual way to play this. Now, at the same time, Bike Rush is no slouch. This is the guy that you guys have known to love and hate. Sometimes you hate him purely because he wins too much for your opinion. But, I mean, look at the amount of Tiberium this guy has harvested. Bike Rush owns, has got under his control so much Tiberium. And he's completely spread across the map. He's already got a potential third and fourth base locations set up. He can do so much to disrupt by, uh, Green Zero. Green Zero is going to make the first big strike of the game. He's also got a couple of plasma missile batteries. He's expecting Green Zero to have hammerheads or orcas or firehawks or something else to support this. And there is indeed hammerheads out on the field. Orcas or firehawks are also somewhere, but uh, they're actually in the middle of the map. They're nowhere near this main base location. The refinery will fall. These Predator tanks should be able to finish that off as they drive away. And it looks like, well, the APCs are going to clean up these descents and Green Zero is going to make safe his third expansion. Orc is coming in. They sneak off one harvester. They blast it down while it's trying to transfer, but there's with the plasma missile batteries to keep the rest of these guys safe. The expansion point has been well utilized by Bike Rush Owns, and Green Zero loses one Orc. A second Orc goes down just on the edge of the range there as the tripods and the gunwalkers blast down so many... These APCs are actually going for the portal and not the expansion point. So Bike Rush Owns still has a little bit of the build radius there as these Predator tanks and the APCs barely manage to form the retreat away from the tripods and the gunwalkers. Bike Rush Owns is continuing to put on pressure. He's got his third base up and running. Look at this, five harvesters, two refineries. His third, his long-term eco is up and running. He eventually will need to get back over to this main base, but that is fine at the current moment. He's got plenty of cash and he's starting to pressure his opponent. He actually drops down a war factory right onto the front line. This is not going to do anything. That was a waste of cash in some sense, but it also kept this army away from the front line and means that all of his tripods could get up close and personal to these railgun predator tanks. This is a lot of firepower on both sides, but I think Green Zero doesn't have the defensive numbers. Let's see, reinforcements coming in for Green Zero from the south, a couple of more predator tanks. There's the phase on a gunwalker and a tripod to move forward and go for the stompy stomp. It's a, little, it's a lightning spike getting in on the action as well. Green Zero desperately trying to hold the defense here, but I think not having any sonic emitters or any heavier defenses may be his downfall. One tripod remains, two tripods if you count the one that's phased, but there's the sonic emitter to chase away this force. The orc is coming in at the last moment here, but Biker Jones is actually gonna reform his attack. He's got a double bet tripod here, just an elite tripod waiting to go heroic, and he gets another blast on a Predator tank, but it looks like Bike Rashones will call it a day. He's caused enough disruption. He's caused enough problems for Green Zero. He's going to reset, and this is time that I think Green Zero desperately needs. If he can get up a second refinery, he's got out another war factory here at his, at his third base. That actually gives him two operating war factories a uh, airfield, which it looks like he just lost an Orca. Uh, two war factories, and he's soon going to have a fully loaded economy powering him into the late game. But Storm Riders are here. The thing that Green Zero wasn't quite prepared for. No anti-air on the ground. No APCs nearby and no pit bulls to deal with these Storm Riders. Eight Storm Riders just absolutely shredding harvester after harvester. And Green Zero is inadvertently patrolling away from the anti-air defenses. Every harvester goes down. Are you kidding me? Bike Rush Jones gets it done. How does he even pull something like that off? That's insane. That's, you, you pull back and you think you've got a minute. You think you've got a moment to rest, but no. 
Storm Riders just show up out of nowhere and just absolutely demolish Green Zero's economy. Oh man, Green Zero in a competitive match for most of that game, but at the end falling apart. His defense was solid, he had pulled it off. But Bike Rush owns just crushing through the economy of Green Zero. Game number one goes to Bike Rush, but that is not the end of this best of nine. Green Zero has a lot of fight left in him. Which takes us to the map, Twilight City. Not one we see very often, but one that we have seen a couple times before. Once again playing as the Red Scrim. This is Bike Rush Owns. We won't get too excited about the double portal just yet. Meanwhile, in the north as the Green GDI. This is Green Zero. Always glad to see him actually play that green color. We won't get too excited about the double portal purely because of the split of the Tiberium spikes. It's a little bit of an awkward one to get with just two, uh, with just one barracks rather. A little bit long distance for your engineers to go. And when you're Scren and you've got the melee buzzers, you want to make sure that you've got that engineer safely escorted to the Tib Spike. Game number one going pretty solidly to Bike Rush owns. Green Zero having trouble defeating Bike Rush in the past. Sometimes it just feels like Bike Rush is unkillable, like somehow the guy has more money than you or something like that. And that's how Bike Rush is to a lot of players. Some people get his number, some people are able to take him down consistently. But then sometimes, maybe it's a little bit of a mental block, maybe it's that play styles are just different enough that there's a kind of advantage that is lent to Bike Rush. But he is not unkillable, and Green Zero certainly can take games off of him. Again, somewhat surprised to see Green Zero, or to see Bike Rush playing Scrin. It's uh, pretty average or pretty normal for Green Zero to play GDI and for Bike Rush to play Nod, but I'm kind of surprised that he's choosing Scrin twice in a row. Twilight City, the map choice of Green Zero, and I believe he also chose this in the semifinals on one of his maps map choices as well. So I guess he likes this map or kind of like Tournament Undergrounds. It's one that he maybe thinks other people are a little bit less familiar with, and so that gives him kind of a... Not an advantage, but just not a uh, an even playing field, perhaps. Which would be, I guess, the definition of an advantage. Things are looking pretty standard for Green Zero and for Bike Rush Owns as well. A couple of Seeker Tanks. We saw this in game number one. Actually, we didn't see this part in game number one. Bike Rush Owns going to steal the blue tib from the middle of the map. But a couple of Seeker Tanks heading out for Bike Rush Owns. Green Zero deflected it quite easily in game number one, and uh, this is interesting. What is your plan here, Green Zero? He's got the MCV on the move. He's gonna see the middle of the map. He's going to see this Harvester as well. The Seeker Tank and the Lightning Spike will be enough to defend against the Predator Tank, but also this MCV may take a couple of shots from that Lightning Spike. And also the Seeker Tanks may move in to try and do some damage. No, they're just going for the Predator Tanks. They're completely ignoring the MCV as the APCs and the Predator Tanks coming in to defend this MCV against the Seekers. And Bike Rush Owns does manage to steal one load of Tiberium, but Green Zero is going to put the gas pedal down to the floor, and he is not going to take it off until the game is over. Interestingly enough, okay. I love this move by Bike Rush Owns. He gets out one, maybe two dev tanks. He loads them up with Tiberium, and he retreats full on back to his main base because he's buying time for the double gravity stabilizer to try and put some damage out on the field in the form of Storm Riders. Dev tanks pulling back. They clean up one APC, and it's going to be the battle of the ground versus the battle of the air. And in this case, one player doesn't shoot up. 
Green Zero needs a solution to deal with these Storm Riders, and he needs it fast. Buzzers are going to be coming out to try and deal with Rocket Squad, so it's going to be a weird back and forth between Green Zero and Bike Roshones. The MCV down to about half health, and Bike Roshones dropping the Buzzer Hive to try and clean up the Rocket Squads. He's doing a good job so far. Double Watchtower is here to try and clean up the Buzzers, and now a double Barracks for, Bike Rush, for Green Zero to try and put out more Rocket Squads. Every single Predator has almost been cleaned up as more and more rocket squads try to deal with the storm riders dev tank starting to clean up some of these buildings and units from green zero but can green zero keep up the assault bike rush has almost been broken but the storm riders have not been stopped the mcb at half health slowly going up in health as the repair tool gets utilized there and no more ground forces for green zero it's just rocket squads Bike Rush Owens has held. Green Zero has to have something else in his back pocket to try and pull this one out. He's sold off everything, so it's all here on the front line. The Storm Riders cross the map, and Green Zero has been defeated. Bike Rush Owens taking a pretty quick 2-0 lead in this best of nine series. Quite a gambit by Green Zero. I love seeing that kind of stuff but he just wasn't able to crush that MCV. Bike Rush Owens making the right call, I guess, with the eight Storm Rider response. Game two goes to Bike Rush, but who will take game three? Which takes us to Tournament LA. Hopefully you can't hear the storm that is raging on outside, and hopefully I don't lose power over the course of this series. In the south as the Red Scrim, currently leading the series this is Bike Rush Owns. And in the north, looking to put some points on the boards here in Los Angeles, this is Green Zero. Still representing GDI. I wonder if this on this map, he'll maybe go a little bit more late game and try and play this one out in that way. Four descent squads heading out to the left side of the map. They're going to try and circle around. It would be really funny if he actually grabbed another uh, engineer and captured an expansion point again on this map as well. I mean, they've got them, and almost no one ever utilizes those expansion points. So it's nice to see Bike Rush Owns doing a little bit of that. Of course, a big thanks to Bike Rush Owns for organizing this tournament and David for donating the prize pool. Always great to see people doing that sort of thing. And David putting some serious money on the line just because he wants to see some more Kane's Wrath action. And he wants to do his part, as he, as he kind of says, to support the community and just create some more cool matches, cool games, and uh, cool series for everyone to enjoy playing in or enjoy watching. Now, the last time we saw Green Zero on this map, he absolutely destroyed a group of Venoms with a sneaky, sneaky EMP. It looks like we're not going to be getting that right now. I don't think... Does EMP actually destroy Storm Riders? I don't totally remember if it does. They're certainly harder to hit because unlike uh, Fire Hot, or unlike Hammerheads or Venoms, they don't sit still and they don't really have to return to base to refuel. I mean, they have to heal up, but... They don't have to sit on those gravity stabilizer pads like all of the other aircraft, and they don't stop moving like hammerheads and venom. So Storm Riders have a bit of an advantage in that sense. Now, one thing to think about is these guys were probably streaming, and depending on if these games were played concurrently, Bike Rush Owns may have been able to watch Green Zero's series, and Green Zero may have been able to watch Bike Rush Owns' semifinal series. So they may have actually gotten a bit of intel on each other, how they were playing on the day. And I was kind of curious if Green Zero or Bike Rush Owns was going to strike down that EMP control center as a result of that. That is something to keep in mind, you know. They may not, uh, I'm not saying anything like stream cheating, but of course watching the series that you're not playing in, there is certainly nothing wrong with that. And getting to see how your opponent is playing against other players is something that can be very useful if you get that opportunity. But it's also possible that the semifinals were played at the same time, and so they couldn't actually watch that series. 
Both players stealing the blue Tiberium from the middle of the map. Green Zero getting a little bit more than half of what was there. And actually, he's going to pretty much fill up on that blue Tiberium. So good move there for Green Zero. Nice little advantage for him. I believe his natural refinery, his natural expansion refinery was also up sooner than Vicrochones. Now here's something that could be interesting, that airfield going down for Green Zero. Will he try anything sneaky sneaky with it? He has been doing a decent amount with Hammerheads and a decent amount with Orcas. Not a lot with Firehawks this game in a double airfield. So this could be classic Green Zero, double airfield, lots of pit bulls, and just try and make your magic happen that way. Of course, Nerve Center and the uh, Plasma Missile Batteries that it allows you to build do quite a good job of shredding Orcas. So we'll have to see if that is Green Zero's actual plan or if he's looking to get up to like, say, 13 hammerheads and then back off of the double uh, airfield production. First plasma, missile First plasma missile batteries going down at both the main base and the natural expansion. Secret tank's gonna try and keep these pit bulls from doing too much damage, but the secret tank just gets eaten up quite easily by those pit bulls. More Seeker Tanks going to be coming in for the defense. Bike Shones playing this one quite close to home. You know, not doing a whole lot of attacking on the other side of the map. He's mostly keeping a lot of forces on his side of the map. Now he's chasing the Pit Bulls down, which is leading him a bit away from home. But no, it is straight into Firehawks. So Green Zero, I'm guessing just going for uh, hard points earlier on. Yeah, he, he got that, which is what was constructing before the tech center got built. So it's straight into Firehawks, getting eight Firehawks before his natural expansion second refinery. So this is a very aggressive play into Firehawks. Very fast Firehawks with Stratofighter also coming up. And he's going to be coming in on the technology assembler. There's the sell-off by Bike Rush Owns. And it looks like three of the Firehawks will be able to escape. There's the tech reset of Bike Rush Owns. And, of course, I mean, even if he had been going for a uh, Warp Chasm, going for, you know, an Eradicator Hexapod, we also would have reset that. But it would have been a full tech reset. In this case, it's actually going to be into one Gravity Stabilizer, possibly a second Gravity Stabilizer queued up behind that. As Green Zero is looking for some additional damage with these Pit Bulls, but he's not going to find it. Secret Tank's cutting back through the middle of the map. Looks like Green Zero has been doing a really good job of stealing that blue Tiberium from the middle of the map, so when Bike Rush shows up to harvest it, there is actually nothing there to be found. Secret Tank's going to start putting some pressure on these Predators and on the main base of Green Zero, and Bike Rush stealing two full loads of, blue, of green Tiberium from the third base of Green Zero. Firehawk's coming in somewhere. It's actually Trippity Triple Gravity Stabilizer. And the Firehawks are going to come in to clean up two of those Gravity Stabilizers. They get at least one of the Storm Riders on the deck. A second one, which was spawning the timing. If it had been moments later, that Storm Rider would have gone down as well. And that's a great move by Green Zero to cut down those Gravity Stabilizers, stop that production, and slow the numbers. That Harvester kind of giving itself away, and he's just going to walk into a bunch of Railgun Predator tanks. It's going to be descents from a double portal as the defense and the stasis locks down four or five of those predator tanks so the rest of them can be overwhelmed by the forces of bike rush owns and i mean easy defense for bike rush owns you just eliminate half of your opponent's army basically in a single click easy enough to do firehawks coming back in they're not actually going to be going for a uh, for a kill on any of the units there as that rifleman tries to deal with the forces on the on the north side of the map. The Firehawks are looking for another target. They're going to be going for a refinery here, and they get the kill. Stratofightering out from the middle of the map over to the left side of the map. Bike Rochones cleans up the forces of Green Zero that were attacking him. At the same time, Bike Rochones somewhat unsettled, maybe? It feels like Bike Shones is floundering much more in this game than in any of the previous games. Once again, I love that he's stealing this green Tiberium from the third base of, of Green Zero. And actually, Bike Shones is going to get two Firehawks on the deck. No! One of them survives with just a bit of health. The Storm Rider and the Seeker Tanks all going down. Keep in mind that is a fully heroic, two fully heroic descents 
in this army. But a lot of APCs, a lot of Predator tanks. This is definitely feeling like the game where Green Zero is the most in control. Part of that started out with that sniping of the Tier 3 just shortly after it was placed down by Bike Rush Owns. Orca Strike coming in against a power plant, doing some nice damage there. More and more plasma missile batteries. They have not gotten that shard launcher upgrade, which is something that Bike Rush Owns would desperately like to have at this point. He would love to have that shard launcher considering how much trouble has been caused by the air forces of Green Zero. Another refinery going down, another successful bombing run for those Firehawks, as it looks like all four of them did manage to escape. A lot of APCs, a couple of Predator tanks mixed in as well, just for good measure, and it's going to be Mechapedes, the choice for Bike Rush Owns. He doesn't have a lot of forces on the ground to deal with this army of Green Zero. Green Zero can put some serious pressure on. He may also grab two Harvesters full of Tiberium, get the kill on those, as well as clear out all of these base defenses. And these Plasma Missile Batteries might just be cash down the drain as Bike Rush Owns taps out, types the GG, and has been defeated. Green Zero putting a point on the board here in game number three and he is cementing that he will not go down without a fight. Tournament Los Angeles being Green Zero's map choice, but now we go to Bike Rush's map choice. So will Bike be able to strike back with a map advantage? And that takes us to Atacama Road. I'm glad to see this map making a comeback. I know maybe 1.02 plus release 15. Uh, CGF said that it was causing some desyncs. It appears that they have fixed that. Otherwise, I don't know why they're playing on it in a tournament match. But in the south, as the green GDI putting a point on the board and looking to even up the score, this is Green Zero! And in the north, sticking with red, sticking with Scrin. Somewhat of a surprise, but looking to further his lead, this is Bike Rush Owens. The Storm Rider transition almost worked for Bike Rush Owns, but Green Zero was just one, maybe two steps ahead almost that entire last game. The Firehawks, the double Firehawk was a great choice by him. Double Airfield Firehawks, rather. Great choice, gets the technology assembler, you know, denies that tier three. And then of course, an obvious move for Bike Rush Owns is go Storm Riders. And Green Zero shuts that down, two thirds of them, just right there, done and dusted. Great choice by Green Zero, great decision making pretty much the whole game long. And then, you know, he just had to play defensively a couple of times. There were some sneaky descents and secret tanks that were trying to make their way into their base, but Green Zero was level headed enough to not let them do any real damage. A lesser player would get ahead in one way, but at the same time falter on their defense and fall apart where they're not looking, you know, where their focus isn't quite as, uh, as sharp. But Green Zero looking to even up the score. So far, things are looking pretty standard. Another Harvester coming on out for Bike Rush Own, so he's up to those four Harvesters. Got that blue tip in the middle of the map for anyone to go for if they so choose. Watchtower going down to deny that Buzzer Scout, but there's two more Buzzers heading in from Bike Rush Owns, so he is going to get a full count of the Harvesters. He's like, all right, you've got five Harvesters, two Refineries at this time. You did not skimp. You did not go some other way. This is like everything that you want to see if your Bike Rush Owns is exactly what you see in Green Zero's base. All of the timings are normal. All of the buildings are normal. And we will get natural expansions coming up for both of these guys. I feel like in this tournament, more than in other tournaments and other games, we have seen a diversion here as people deploy their MCV for their natural expansion. I feel like we've been seeing more delays on the refineries that go down here and more diversions in the tech tree where someone decides like suddenly... You know, I'm going to go all the way up to Tier 3 before getting a refinery. I'm going to get one refinery, then I'm going to go for something crazy. So I feel like in this tournament, in this uh, recent times, we've been seeing more diversions happening here at the natural expansion kind of timing. The, may the, the first two, three minutes of the game are looking very, very standard. And then once we get that natural expansion, sometimes things get a little weird, get a little funky. But for now... 
is looking pretty normal. I mean, we still got a minute or two left before things can really go haywire, but uh, we'll see. All right, Bike Rochelle, he says the winner of this game is going to be Economy. That's where he's placing his bet. He's also stealing that blue Tiberium. Maybe a teensy bit of pressure here on the right side of the map with a couple of Seeker tanks. Thunder is just going absolutely crazy outside. Ah, eh, not that crazy. But I can hear it through my headphones and through the uh, over the course of the sound effects. So thunder is pretty loud out here, apparently. Descent's coming out. We got the nerve center. He's upgrading something. I guess there's only one thing he can be upgrading. He's got them force fields coming up. Perfect scout by Bike Rush owns. Sometimes Bike Rush is the kind of guy who also beacons. You know, either for himself or observers. You know, he just likes to let people know what he sees sometimes. And uh, a couple of Seeker tanks are going down, and it looks like Green Zero also gets a perfect scout on exactly what Bike Rush is doing. Bike Rush starting to drop those plasma missile batteries. And uh, one thing that you can try and do, I'm guessing he's starting shard launchers immediately. Needs a good minute and a quarter to actually get that up and running. Some players will try and bait the Orcas to come into, or the Firehawks rather. Great catch by Bike Rush Owns. Gets the, gets the Tier 3 and gets the airfield. So nice deny of any potential Firehawks that were coming in. And it almost certainly will give them time to get up that tier, uh, that Shard Launcher upgrade. Which is really, really what he wants for uh, anti-air. Anyways, sometimes players will try and bait because they know your opponent is going to be going for the technology assembler, and so you just surround it with so much stuff that they almost can't get it without taking an equal amount of damage. And then you're just kind of watching it, you know. You're always standing by with your cell tool ready to go, and you just want to make it as costly as it possibly can be for your opponent to try and grab it. What are these two engineers for? Is he really keeping these on standby to try and jump into a building if Firehawks drop bombs? If so, that would be pretty crazy. Otherwise, he's got two engineers on standby for something. We did see a Mastermind also running around the map, so we have to keep an eye out for area mind control, maybe a little bit of teleportation. Or actually, no, I guess just regular mind control, not area mind control. But some potential teleportation. That's what it was for. This is great by Bike Rush Owns. He teleports the two engineers to him. And then, of course, the other one is going to be a little bit less uh, safe with that rifleman watching over that tip spike. So I don't know that Bike Rush Owns will ever actually capture that other tip spike. But he gets one, which is pretty funny. Firehawks coming in. They're going to try and straddle fighter out. And they do get the War Factory. They force the sell-off at least. And they do trade out one Firehawk for the War Factory. So that's a nice kind of reset for the production of Bike Rush Owns. Slows down the production of Bike Rush as Green Zero is getting his Marv out. Is getting that late game army all powered up. No railguns and no railguns started. So kind of a surprise from Green Zero. And it looks like he's just getting one... Uh, zone Trooper, so he's going to sell off the Reclamator Hub immediately, and he's just going to go back to his old War Factory uh, production. Still no rail guns, so he is really not looking to put any more damage into the guns of those Predator tanks. Secret tanks with those force fields. Force field generator probably going to be researched as well, yeah. Bike Russians is already on that. It's 80 or 90 percent done. Green Zero is eventually going to recap, and, oh my gosh, the double engineer. So because Bike Rush Owens can't capture the other Tib Spike, he actually may be able to recapture the Tib Spike from Green Zero once Green Zero gets it back. Low power mode initiated by Green Zero as he bombs out another power plant. Bike Rush Owens showing up here, and he's actually going to wormhole in uh, some tripods. He's just completely going in the back door. Two tripods, a bunch of descents, going to be jumping on the natural expansion of Green Zero and potentially cutting off his technology. His Tier 2 and his Tier 3 are all here. Mass sell-off by Green Zero, and he is just going to cut loose and run. He is trying to head back to, I'm guessing, his third base where he's going to try and rebuild. But what do you even do when that much firepower suddenly shows up in your base? And 
Back where Jones actually unloads a couple more tripods back into the portal and goes back to the front line to try and defend against the attack that Green Zero is initiating. But this was a great play by Bike Rojon, something that almost you can't defend against if you're Green Zero. I mean, stopping a portal from going up, a wormhole rather, is, uh, is close to impossible. The vision is so good that, that you just, it's almost impossible to stop. And Green Zero is just going to go for it. He's got a couple of juggernauts. He's got a decent number of predator tanks, even an APC mixed in here and a couple of rocket squads to try and cover his six. He's got a couple of secret tanks to deal with and tripods. He has the forces to crush that army, but that will do it. Yeah, breaking Bike Rush's defense would have been close to impossible. And Green Zero agrees, so he will drop this game that will do it for game number four some critical plays there by bike rush owns to make his lead that much bigger green zero is showing some good games but he's just getting outplayed by that little bit too much that'll do it for game number four let's see how things go in game number five which takes us to sick city for game number five in the north as the green GDI. This is Green Zero. He's got one point on the board. He's looking to add to that to make this a bit more of a back and forth. In the south as the red scrim. Feeling confident. This is Bike Rush Owns. Now, of course, with the prize pool distribution, both of these guys are guaranteed $200 regardless of how they finish. They have played enough matches, they have won enough games to secure that much. And of course, the first place winner will get $300, so they're playing for a difference of $100 here in the finals. How crazy will they go? With Bike Rush Owens being up 3-1 in the map score, will he choose to go a little bit crazy? A little bit weird? because he's confident in that map score or does Bike Rush Owens continue to play it fairly safe, fairly standard just to make sure that he doesn't give away his lead it's a very much a personality question and something that we see players do different things or play different ways uh, on different days so some tournaments, some days someone goes a little bit crazy and uh, the next tournament they play it a bit more conservative even when they're ahead I was thinking that portal was being stuck around for some reason. It seems like they, uh, the reason is nothing. So he keeps the portal around for just a minute, and then he sells it off. Cleans up the bridge on the left side of the map to kind of cut off that route from Green Zero. Refineries that would be dangerously close if Bike Rush was playing Nod, but... He's not. Green Zero deciding to stick with GDI this entire tournament. I don't think I've seen a single game of him playing not GDI. He's just sticking with that GDI. Not deciding to play Nod, not deciding to play Scrin. Just uh, playing his best suit, playing his best faction. And definitely a good way to go, and can definitely respect that. Bug Rush Owens, again, still surprised we're here in, like, game number five of this series, and it's been Scrin all the way. So I guess Bike Rush Owns feels Scrin has a better chance against GDI than Nod does. But we've also seen Bike Rush Owns dismantle many GDI players with his Nod. So I don't know that that's 100% true. Six City, it's one of those maps where I feel like games turn short. They tend to be shorter on this map. Part of that is probably the design with the way... You, uh, and it's quite a small map, but you also get quite close to your opponent with your natural expansion. You've only got these two fields to rely on, and then it's up to the blue fields after that. And uh, there's just not as much Tiberium on this map as there might be on other maps. Although with your natural expansion being so large, there is not little Tiberium on this map. Yeah, I don't know. It's just maps, or games on this map tend to be short. They tend to be kind of furious. APC gets cleaned up. Bike Rush Owens probably a little bit worried that there's an engineer inside of that APC at first. Of course, at this point, you know, the APC wasn't driving like there's an engineer inside of it, so. And uh, Green Zero didn't, like, drop off an engineer next to a tip spike or anything like that, so. 
They're both going to be keeping their two tib spikes. They're both going to be stealing away that blue Tiberium. Dev tanks are out on the field. We don't have attenuated force fields coming up just yet. Bike Roshones clears the building and goes for the kill on the rocket squads as well. I mean, Buzzer Swarm costs, costs like 15 or maybe a thousand credits, but uh, clearing out all of those infantry and really isolating the tanks definitely feels like it's worth it. They're even going to get the kill on this rocket squad. Lovely move there by Bike Roshones. Clears out all of those forces and it gives his dev tanks a moment to get to the front line to use their to use their charged up Tiberium on these Predator tanks. And well, goodbye one dev tank. Second dev tank is going to get targeted down and Bike Roshones needs to mount a serious defense against these forces. He's got a good amount of descents coming in with these Seeker tanks. Would be nice if you had the force fields up and running. Nice mind drop there by Green Zero. But Green Zero is going to sound the retreat. He's going to pull back from the front line. He's got two refineries up and running. Could drop a third if he wants. And, uh, well, actually, no. That's what he's exactly going to be doing right then and there. So he's going to get up his three refineries on that natural expansion. Could transfer over a couple of harvesters as well. And then perhaps just War of Attrition right here in the middle of the map kind of question is how much does green zero commit to this kind of mid-game tech of this uh natural expansion and just predator tanks apcs and rocket squads and how much does he try to get up to juggernauts try to get it up to rail guns and the more late game heavy hitting gdi stuff in this case he's going to be faltering against the defense of bike rush owns bike rush owns pushing forward with the tripods with the seeker tanks and he's going to be able to deal with this little army that green zero has Green Zero continuing to sound the retreat. He's going to pull north. He's looking for an opening, but he's just not finding a lot of opportunities to do damage. I don't know if he wants to go that much further up the hill. Yeah, he pulls back. He doesn't want to get trapped up in that hill, but with dev tanks and tripods behind him. And for now, the commitment by Green Zero is a little bit delayed on the upgrades, but he's got a bigger ground army. He hasn't been able to do a whole lot with that ground army, but he's kind of reforming himself right now. He's going to give a moment for AP ammo to finish up. He's got his tech center on the ground now, and I assume uh, railguns or juggernauts or a marv or something is going to be the result of that tech center. A number of predator tanks low on health. Needs to be careful with all of this screen firepower just out of range. Rocket Squad's going to get some nice shots off on these Gunwalkers. That's a great thing that Green Zero has done. Uh, garrisoning up the middle of the map. Warp Chasm on the field. It looks like the Eradicator Hexapod is about half done. And it's going to be at the Zone Heads. Great choice by Green Zero. You can dump a lot of money into Juggernauts and Zone Heads and have a very efficient, hard-to-kill army. I love this, a Predator tank and an APC sneaking around the back. I wish there was an engineer inside of that APC to, like, grab the Tier 3. That would be a huge reset of Green's, of Bike Rush owns. Green Zero steps forward. He may be able to grab one tripod. No, he doesn't actually get the kill on that tripod. He maybe will sacrifice a couple of APCs for it, but he almost got that tripod. He almost got some momentum under him to try and punch down this army. And, well, one Shock Trooper, and it looks like two Descents are going to be the garrisoning choice for this Eradicator Hexapod. Juggernauts can deal with an Eradicator Hexapod very easily, but let's see if the Tripods can close the distance on the Juggernauts. Zone Head's coming in. They're able to cut down the Gunwalker very easily. Not a lot of anti-air left in the forces of Bike Rush Owns. One Tripod down. A second Tripod will certainly get eliminated. And with only one Shock Trooper inside of that Eradicator Hexapod, it doesn't do a whole lot for in terms of anti-air. The Descents do a lot of damage. But, uh, of course, they don't shoot up very well. Got at least one more zone trooper on the ground, bringing the total number of zone heads at least up to five for Green Zero. Would be great if he could add on a couple more hammerheads on top of that, but he's got a good mix of units to win a long-term war against Bike Rush Owns. There's the scan going down. 
revealing not a whole lot, but I think he should have the vision to see that the Eradicator, the Warp Chasm, rather, got sold off. Biker Zone's transitioning into at least one Gravity Stabilizer, possibly more than one Gravity Stabilizer. I think he's placed it in kind of an odd spot on purpose. I love this by Green Zero circling around the north side of the natural expansion of Bike Rush, trying to find an opportunity that isn't defended as well. Predator tanks and APCs swinging around to the right side. They're going to force Green, uh, Bike Rush's army to reset and to refocus over onto the right side, which may open up an opportunity for the zone heads to sneak in on the left side and do some big damage. Four Storm Riders, a lot of tripods going to move in to respond. Here's the army of Green Zero there on the right side. It's going to get crushed if it sticks around too long. But what's the other move? He's going for the portals. He gets one portal, and he's going for the warp sphere now. But the uh, Storm Riders show up. The plasma missile battery annihilates one of the hammerheads, and three hammerheads down. Green Zero against the Storm Riders just doesn't have the forces. And goodbye, every single Storm Rider gets eliminated. One zone trooper survives. And wow, those Storm Riders and the plasma missile batteries just do too much damage. Those zone heads did not have a chance. And now Green Zero is kind of in this awkward spot. He's got a lot of firepower with the Marv and all of these juggernauts. He actually has way more juggernauts than I thought. Uh, he definitely has an anti-air weakness, but there aren't that many Storm Riders, so potentially APCs and maybe a couple of slingshots can actually deal with those Storm Riders without too much trouble. Lightning Spike is here. Tiberium is pretty much all gone. These players are going to have to figure out something else to do for their economy. Bike Rush owns does actually has left a decent amount of that blue Tiberium. He's let it grow up, so both of these guys can harvest a good amount of blue Tiberium as we transition from, uh, from like, just regular late game into however these guys are going to try and end this. Mastermind out on the field for Bike Rush. Storm Riders, yeah, they're looking to kill this bridge. And, hey, that's a great move there by Bike Rush Owens. He loses two of the Storm Riders. He gets to keep one of them. A little bit of trouble there for Green Zero if he leaves that one Storm Rider. And then that Storm Rider may be... No, the Storm Rider actually heads home. So the bridge remains intact, at least for now. Riflemen are going to get a couple of shots on those Harvesters. Eradicator Hexapod, it's gonna... Oh, he's just Hexalaming, isn't he? I don't know where the Mastermind is. I assume the Mastermind is back near some... Yeah, okay, it's here, near one Corruptor. So, Bike Rush owns... Well, when you're in a bit of a stalemate like this, Hexalaming is a way to try and break your opponent. We don't have any super weapons out on the field. You know, could be an Ion Cannon in the works. Could be a Rift Generator heading up. Oh my gosh, this is so much damage. Those Juggernauts, five, six of them, do just a ton of damage to an Eradicator Hexapod. Well, Pax versus an APC. The same letters, just arranged slightly differently. And turns out the pack wins that fight. Stealing two loads of blue Tiberium is Bike Rush owns, but Green Zero driving further distance, a more dangerous path is actually stealing more blue Tiberium from Bike Rush than Bike Rush is stealing from Green Zero. At least initially. I guess not so much now. Now that these harvesters are going to get killed by these tripods, the dev tank, and the storm rider. One planetary assault carrier steps forward, but that's not really a recipe for success. Those drones are going to be cleaned up. The Eradicator Hexpod once again stepping forward. Uh, I'm not sure what he thinks is going to be different this time. There are a lot of Juggernauts here. Zonehead's going to get the drop on one tripod and one dev tag. Great catch by those Zoneheads. And Bike Rush Owns is just trying to clean up that refinery. I get that. Killing off that refinery, maybe even cleaning up these power plants as well, just to add insult to injury. It's not going to win you the game, those couple of power plants. But 
It causes your opponent to just have to spend a little bit more cash on something other than their army. And now these... Uh, I guess you really need EMP to lock that guy down. He may have shockwave artillery, but shockwave artillery will probably just signal the Eradicator Hexapod to leave. I like that Bike Rush Owens is going to go hide in the corner behind this Tib Spike and just go for the kill of the Tib Spike. You might as well. You can teleport away at pretty much any moment. Got to be careful. This is a lot of DPS. You don't want to overstay your welcome. Right there. Sneak away. I guess a wormhole could break green zero. You either have to wormhole like right into the middle of the army, or you have to wormhole like over here, far enough away from the army that the juggernauts don't just slaughter everything that you've got. Because the juggernauts will absolutely destroy you. Green Zero doesn't have a lot of stuff that's good for... Whoa, that drone ship got sniped! Good move there by Green Zero, killing that drone ship that quickly. And a growth accelerator on the blue tib. That's a funny move by Bike Rush Owns. Rift Generator is here. Tripods are moving out. Green Zero doesn't really have a whole lot of stuff that's good at jumping backwards through a wormhole. So, Bike Rush Owns can cross the wormhole pretty safely. Sometimes wormholes will backfire because they can be used by both sides. Is he trying to kill that mastermind? I'm not sure what the purpose of that would be. But either that or he had the tripods a little bit uh, hotkeyed with the corruptors, which were healing the mastermind. Bike Rush Owns grabs that tib spike. Green Zero is almost healed up that tib spike. And Sniper Team's going to be moving out. Possibly to call down Bombardment. Not a not an ability that we see very often. But the Juggernauts can bombard within the vision of the Sniper Team. So... Maybe. Ooh. APC gets eliminated there. If only, if only, Bike Rush Owns would have killed off that... Ooh, there's the Engineer. Eradicator Hexpot is going for the kill of the Engineer, but I don't think he... I know he does get it just barely there. And there's the phase as the Eradicator Hexpot is actually just going to try and walk on out of here over to some Juggernauts and go for the kill that way. The Sniper Teams make their way all the way into the back of Bike Rush's base. They have to be careful. The Stealth Detection will kill them. Never mind. You don't have to be careful if you're already dead. Well, it was a fun idea. It was a very fun idea. And it looks like Green Zero may be able to grab this tip spike, which would be nice. Get a little bit of that income back, a little bit of that cash back under his control. <laughs> oh, the lightning strike kills the engineer. Uh, that's unfortunate. Green Zero is going to have to be a little bit more careful here with those sniper teams. Give them a stop command there at the bottom of the hill. I think he's going to go for the power plant. And... Now he can actually see the tier 3. Great catch there by Green Zero, calling in a ton of juggernaut shots. That was a great kill. Not often do you actually see that get utilized. And I think a minute or two ago, Bike Rush Owns was trying to go for like a multi-MCV kind of thing. And uh, I think it just didn't quite work out there with the Firehawks moving in. There's the stasis around a bunch of the Juggernauts. The Eradicator Hexpot taking so much damage, but it doesn't matter because the Shockwave Artillery is a bit too late. The Marv goes down. Three tripods get eliminated. Has Bike Rush Owns finally broken Green Zero? This is so many Juggernauts still alive and kicking. He cleans up all of he cleans up all of the husks. The packs repositioning to the north side. Bike Rush Owns is going to try and break Green Zero way down in the south. Uh, the drone ship gets eliminated. So I think that was the second drone ship. I'm not sure. Oh, that was the Rift Generator. 
not the drone ship, as he teleports the drone ship back to the front line, and he's just going to go for it. Orbital bombardment coming down, and it's going to be Juggernauts versus Tripods as Bike Rush Jones closes the distance, and the Eradicator Hexapod stepping on forward. It goes down. The Tripods get eliminated, but the planetary assault carriers are all that's left as the orbital bombardment cleans up the ground army. Bike Rush Jones has almost nothing left but what is in the sky. Green Zero has almost nothing left but Juggernaut, and it's down to the packs to try and pull something out of nothing. He's actually going to go for Engineer Recaps on... No, he's going to Sense. He's going to Sense right into the enemy's front line, but the attack has fallen apart. The Rift Generator, which was supposed to break the forces of Green Zero, got sniped, and Bike Rush Jones has been defeated, keeping hope alive. Green Zero puts another point on the board. Six City is his comeback. And what an attack by Bike Rush Jones. What a critical strike by Green Zero to clean up that Rift Generator. What a sick move to close out the game. But the series is not over. Let's see what happens next. And game number six takes us to the absolute classic tournament rift. On the left side, down 2-3, still repping GDI, playing as green, this is Green Zero. And on the right side, not, ooh, hey -o. not yet at match point territory. In the red, playing Nod. This is Bike Rush Owns. I did not expect to see a Shadow Team Rush coming out from Bike Rush Owns. It's not the craziest thing in the world, considering that there are four Tibbs bikes, three of which, which can be secured by Nod with a, uh, with a Shadow Team Rush. But also, Green Zero is just most likely not expecting this. Oh my gosh, that Watchtower placement could not have been better with delaying that as much as possible, getting out as much DPS as possible. And I guess Green Zero was expecting that, or his Rifleman saw something a little bit awry, a little bit amiss, perhaps the lateness of the War Factory, something like that, and uh, or he just suspected it straight up. But uh, Green Zero is going to probably not going to be able to get the kill on that Engineer. I think uh, the Shadow Team will be able to secure that for Bike Rush Owns. Shadow Team still running around for Bike. Nice little cluster of the of the Predator, the Pit Bull rather, and the Watchtower around these power plants. Not actually a second Watchtower cute. I'm actually kind of surprised that he didn't go the sort of ultra safety route. And the Engineer almost getting sniped. The Rifleman ex exiting away from the Shadow Teams and allowing the Engineer to, uh, well, eventually allowing the Engineer to get in there, but allowing the Rifleman to survive against the Shadow Team, not getting just insta-sniped by the Shadow Team. Love this move by Green Zero, putting a little bit of pressure on that power plant. Not a big, big deal by any stretch of the imagination, but just a little bit of damage here, a little bit of damage there. Shadow Team's going to be looking to split the attention of Green Zero. And uh, they may just try and rush in and go for a power plant anyways. They're going to get another power plant, forced to power down the War Factory, and uh, Green Zero will shut down most of the Shadow Team, letting just one member of one squad and three members of another squad escape. Second refinery isn't up yet for Green for Bike Rush Owns. Just now gets it up and running. Now uh, Green Zero, he's got those refineries placed. We'll have to see if he keeps his refinery placement careful as we head into the late game. He may have been got he may have gotten a little bit too comfortable with bad refinery placements against a Catalyst missile, but fine refinery placements against uh, Scrin. We'll see. Pitbulls will eventually clean up Shadow Teams on the ground, but it takes an extremely long time to uh, kill the Shadow Team on the ground with your Pitbull. Green Zero going for the MCV placement in the middle of the map. We saw him do this versus Eclipse on Tournament Highlands, I believe. And, uh, or was it? Was it Green Zero versus? I think it was Green Zero versus Eclipse on Tournament Highlands. Uh, but he's going for it again here on Tournament Rift. He's going to try and escape with the Shadow Teams. He's going to barely not do it. 
No, he does survive. The shadow team in the air just barely surviving. Like, oh, man. The chances of that shadow team getting away right then, right there, are so small. Harvester should be able to escape. Or might need a little bit of an assist from a scorpion tank, but it should be able to get on out of there. Bike Rush Owns is definitely aware of exactly what Green Zero is doing. What is the response from Bike Rush Owns? It's more harvesters, so it's probably not going to be a double war factory. It's not, probably not going to be an MCV cell and, like, immediate pressure into the middle of the map. I love the Shadow Team trying to sneak around the side, trying to cause more problems, do more damage. The Scorpion tanks have been called off of the frontline assault, and it's more and more harvesters coming out for Bike Rush Owns. So he is really looking to go late game. He is really looking to go long term. And, well, these two shadow teams, they don't quite get the kill on that power plant. I'm not sure if there was just a bit of delay or what happened there. Shredder Turk cleans up that rifleman squad. Green Zero pretty much always with the scouting rifleman heading around the map. He's so good at doing that. And APC Engineer is going to grab these tip spikes back. And it looks like he's barely either going to get it or barely not going to get it as the engineer pops on out. The Scorpion tanks go for the target and he's not going to get the kill on that engineer. The second engineer almost certainly will go down. I think there's too much firepower here from Bike Rush Owns to allow that to happen. There's the exit and there's the kill of the engineer. You win some, you lose some. In this case, Green Zero kind of losing out, hoping he could get out a couple of APC Engineer tip spike captures sneakily, but it was not meant to be. Predator Tanks in the north going to be potentially pressuring Bike Rush's main base. He's got the Ops Center up there as well as some upgraded power plants, so there is some infrastructure which wouldn't fully reset Bike Rush owns, but would be annoying to rebuild for sure. The upgraded power plants may kind of break any kind of base defense defense. Nice mind drop by Bike Rush Owns. He goes for the air tower almost... No, he is building Venoms. I was going to say almost purely for the mind drop. Great disruption there and also may claim a couple of uh, Predator tank lives. One refinery is under threat. The other one is safe for now, but the harvesters need to get on out of here. Laser turret goes down. The predator tank's going to have to deal with venoms, buggies, bikes, and scorpion tanks as they try and hunt down these last couple of harvesters, but they're just not going to get it. Predator tanks trading out against scorpions. It can work out, but not quite so much in this situation with so much other firepower adding into the mix for Bike Rush Owns. Green Zero, I would love if he uh, sent out a surveyor or something to take the southern expansion as well as his uh, third base. And uh, maybe even stealing a little bit of this blue tip. A nice move there by Green Zero. He's also gone double airfield. It looks like it's just for the hammerheads for now. He could go into orcas at some point, but this MCV a little bit precarious, a little bit dangerous out in the open. One bike does go down there trying to hunt down that harvester. Bike Rush Owns sells off some of this stuff back home. It looks like he's going to reform his army as he kind of tries to decide where exactly he wants to go, what he wants to do. I don't know that this is really like a multi-MCV kind of game for Bike Rush Owns. Actually, he builds an additional MCV. He's going to try. Uh, it can work. It seems like kind of an awkward situation to try and multi-MCV. Getting a kill on a Harvester there is nice. Maybe if he had three uh, Tib Spikes and his opponent wasn't going for, didn't already have control of the middle of the map. It looks like the MCV is going to be potentially under threat as these Venoms close in and it's trying to go for the deploy. It's actually going to be delayed just a moment there. It's taking a lot of damage. Green Zero isn't deploying his MCV. Takes a ton of damage from those Scorpions before he actually goes for the deploy and the Scorpions completely surrounding this MCV, so Green Zero won't really have any defenses to fight back. He's pressuring Bike Rush's main base at the same time. Predator Tank swinging in from the north. They're going to fight with that Avatar, and they're going to try and strike out against the forces of Bike Rush owns, but they may just merely strike out entirely and die. 
Green Zero doesn't have a lot for reinforcements coming in to help out these Predator tanks, so he's going to rely on the forces that are here to win out the day. He could go for this kind of moving army thing as he cleans up power plant after power plant, denying the obelisks from really doing anything as the avatars try and close the distance and clean up the forces. Green Zero looking to deal with this army, but Bike Rush Owns has nothing on the ground to really clean this force up. Green Zero is going to have to just deal with the obelisk straight up that the Sam sites push away the hammerheads. And now that the hammerheads have been broken, I don't know that Green Zero can sustain the attack for too much longer. The hammerheads all get eliminated. The Sam sites forcing the tanks further north as the obelisk is down south. Obelisk coming down, Orca Strike on top of the MCV, but this is, of course, the second MCV of Bike Rush Owns. Scorpion tanks clean up the main base of Green Zero. Green Zero looking every which way to try and find a win, but not really having it. Natural expansion in the south didn't pan out for Green Zero. Scorpion tanks coming in. They're going to try and cut down the power, and with no MCV on the way, those power plants could permanently reduce Green Zero to a low power mode. No, his defense is good enough, and his... As somehow his Predator tank still finding value here on the right side of the map, going for power plant after power plant as the obelisk pokes them down. The APC is going to try what they can, but there's only three of them left, and there is just not much left. Bike Rush owns committing to kill the Hammerheads. The Venoms may all go down in service of that attempt. Scorpion tanks pulling away. Venom's coming back to try and push back these hammerheads. A real back and forth dodge and weave from these two players. Redeemer engineering facility and these uh, Predator tanks, kind of a curious choice. They're going to reverse move into the Scorpions as the Obelisk and the Venoms finish off. But actually an APC showing up to try and clean up these Venoms. Every force from Green Zero converging. The three APCs from earlier that we discounted are showing back up as mines get dropped on top of these Predator tanks. The Redeemer Engineering Facility getting targeted down. The SAM sites all being eliminated as it looks like the APCs are going to try and come to the rescue of the Hammerheads. And even this Harvester here just caught in the middle. Another Obelisk gets eliminated. Another obelisk is constructed as the mines get dropped on top of green zero's forces and they all explode green zero almost coming through with a massive victory but in the end just barely being pushed back by bike rush owns two avatars stomp their way to the front line the redeemer has been reset bike rush owns has not been able to get his epic out and at the same time green zero has recovered the mcv is back out on the field and he's finally going to take his natural expansion. Bike Rush Owens has been pretty strapped for cash for the last couple of minutes of this game. But he's got stealth tanks. And that may be the only thing that matters is the stealth tanks. This is a lot of hammerheads from Green Zero. Natural expansion, hammerheads. These are all good things to try and close out this game. This stealth tank may actually get a kill on a couple of APCs for free, earn a little bit of extra veterancy for itself as the APCs fight the SAM sites and the power plants. Hammerheads, a couple of them going down, a couple of Venoms getting eliminated as well. And that stealth tank cleaning up, I think, three APCs just purely by itself. The MCV is under threat. Green Zero needs some kind of defense to hold off the avatars, to hold off the MCV, and even, apparently, the harvesters. As the Sonic Emitter goes down, where are the other forces for Green Zero? The stealth tanks are going to try and guard against the hammerheads as Green Zero looks to reposition his army and deal with the forces of Bike Rush Owns. Operation Center right onto the front line, maybe just for the sell-off or maybe just for the body blocking as he's trying to create more problems for these Hammerheads. More and more SAM sites getting so much damage onto the Hammerheads. There's the sell-off, the Black Hand Squad right onto the front line to try and deal with the Sonic Emitter, which is targeting the Harvester as the Avatars close the distance. And Green Zero has nothing left to stop the forces of Bike Rush Owns from destroying his MCV. 
on the same grounds where the first one died. The tech center is here. The Marv is on the way, but can Green Zero hold off this army for long enough for the Marv to get on out? Stealth tanks step forward. They get the kill on two hammerheads very easily, and Obelisk goes down as well. The tier three gets eliminated, but the Marv will finish just barely. One Marv and one zone trooper. Is it enough to stop this army of bike rush owns? Two stealth tanks go down, and one hammerhead does still remain. The main base, the natural expansion of Green Zero being the healthiest, just healthiest Tiberium field remains remaining on the map. The War Factory takes a lot of damage, but it saves the Obelisk as another Obelisk goes down in the north. Green Zero getting pushed back on every front from his own natural expansion. Even the Harvester goes down, and Green Zero is going to have to form another plan. His Marv is going in for the cash boost. This is how he's going to fuel his backup plan. This is how he's going to get his next army, is Marvesting this field. If only he had a mastermind to whisk away this Marv. But who the heck cares that this is inefficient harvesting? This is the best harvesting that Green Zero can go for right now. And he may actually lose this Marv for it. EMP Raider buggies are coming in to potentially seal the deal to lock down this Marv and guarantee the kill. EMP locks it down. Another Raider Buggy showing up to get the chain reaction as the MCV redeploys for Bike Rush Owns. He's looking to close the distance, get more obelisks in range of this, uh, of this Marv. Green Zero had a lot riding on this epic, and it won't quite make it. What is his plan from here? He's built another MCV and he snuck out an airfield into the north of the map. What an incredible game this is turning into as Bike Rush owns is switching places with Green Zero. Double Sam site goes down, claims two more hammerheads. Green Zero doing such a good job of preserving the hammerheads at some points in the game, but just getting caught by those Sam sites at other points in the game. And uh, this might actually be too many hammerheads for this one stealth tank to deal with. He's going to try and hit and run. Green Zero is trying desperately to get lucky with a couple of extra shots. Double airfield in the north. They're going to jump on this SAM site. They're trading out one hammerhead for the SAM site, but a second SAM site goes down. If Green Zero can jump on the turrets fast enough, he can avoid taking any massive damage. But the, oh no, the stacking of the hammerheads. The stealth tanks get massive DPS off on those hammerheads. And this is just uh, turning from bad to worse. This attack looked like it might be able to turn things around for Green Zero, but now I'm not so sure as Green Zero has been defeated. Bike Rochon's claiming both sides of the map and his attacks falling flat. Green Zero almost pulling that one out to give himself a better chance at a comeback. But Bike Rochon's has secured another win, putting another point on the board. Four to two. Bike Rush owns, just has to close out one last game, and Green Zero is up against the wall. It has to be perfect from here on out. Let's see what happens in game number seven. Which takes us to Tournament Stadium for game number seven of the finals. In the north, returning to Scrin, this is Bike Rush owns. And in the south, on the right side, as the green GDI, this is Green Zero. These two guys going back and forth in that last game. Green Zero putting up a good fight. I love the move to the third field in the middle of the map first. It hasn't actually worked out either of the times that he's tried that, but it's always great to see, and it almost worked out. It was a, it was a good idea. Game number seven in a different tournament. This would be it. This would be the end. But here, well, we've got potentially two more games past this one, which is always great to see. A little bit of a longer series from time to time. Not every tournament needs to end in a best of nine or a best of 11 or something like that. But it's great to every once in a while see something longer than a best of seven. Especially when you get those best of seven semis. Even like the way that uh, GSL does not where it's best of seven semis and a best of seven finals. I also like that. 
having those semis and the finals, because usually the top four players are all good, and getting to see that best of seven series is always nice. Scrin vs. GDI, a brief diversion to Nod vs. GDI, but now we're back to the basics for this series. Again, a bit of a surprise just to see the number of times that uh, Bike Rush Owns plays Scrin against Green Zero, where against pretty much everyone else, Bike Rush Owns is playing Nod. But against Green Zero, he says Scrin is the way to go. And he's been largely right, but he's also been wrong a couple of times. Green Zero showing some great games throughout this tournament and throughout this series. I'm curious to see what else he uh, what else he brings to the table. Is it going to be more double or field orcas, double airfield orcas, or uh, double airfield hammerheads? He does like his air units, that Green Zero. Pitbull through the middle of the map. Good numbers of harvesters on both sides. A couple of seeker tanks heading out. Like Rochon's actually delaying his fifth harvester by quite some time. And also delaying his refinery at his natural expansion. So he's going for the nerve center, he's going for the lightning spike. But uh, this generally isn't like a game-winning move. This is just a bit of pressure. Rocket Squad's going to be the response from Green Zero. And he should be able to get these Harvesters back online relatively soon. Ooh, it looks like he's going to lose the Power Plant, which is annoying. But it's certainly better than losing a Harvester. And a couple more Predator Tanks or Pit Bulls should be showing up. Ooh, one Pit Bull on the left side of the map to see the delayed refinery from Bike Rush Owns but also to put a bit of pressure on that Harvester. And now Green Zero is going to push Bike Rush away, and it's actually going to be just a descent to deal with that one Pitbull. Very nicely there. A little bit of damage on the Harvester, but no problem at all for Bike Rush. Green Zero should be getting, I guess, either his War Factory. Oh, no, he goes right into the Command Center. So War Factory and Second Refinery at the Natural Expansion are going to be after his command post. Second refinery right out of the gate from Bike Rush Owns after the delay in getting his first refinery up. Predator Tank's going to be pulling back to a more defensible location. And what do we got? Seeker Tank gets the scout off from Bike Rush Owns. It looks like it is going to be double airfield, but these are split position airfields. So, I don't know that Bike Rush Owns really saw that. No, it's too far away from his vision to see the other airfield. So, he sees one of them, but he doesn't see the second airfield. Which is definitely a nice advantage for Green Zero, depending on what he's going. Orcas, Hammerheads, or Firehawks. Could actually be going straight up to Tier 3. He did this on the other game, and I think it was tournament Los Angeles and it ended up working out he's going to be bombing the power plant and uh, yeah if he gets the oh no it's right into the 8 storm riders so it's not going to be up to the tier 3 and then into the storm riders it's straight into the storm riders which if this is firehawks could be the perfect response because looking to bomb out that tier 3 and then looking to keep bike rush down is what uh, green zero would be looking to do with those firehawks there's the confirm, the scout by Bike Rush Owns. He's going to get eyes on the Firehawk. He knows the plan. And there's the Tier 3 going to be going up in the north. Kind of in an odd position. And look at this, the Storm Riders heading right up that way. Are they literally just going to camp out? They might literally just camp out near this Tier 3. Strato Fighter has been purchased. Hard Points has not. So it's four Firehawks. They're going to Stratofighter in. 
Probably one, maybe two of them will go down, and then they will have to stratify her out. Or they just loaded up with anti-air missiles, and they're going to try and deal with the Storm Riders. There's the uh, freeze on two of the Firehawks, locking them down, or just one of the Firehawks, as the Storm Riders are coming in. The Tier 3 is also locked down, so Bike Rush Owens knows that there is no response from Green Zero against these Storm Riders. He's going to get a kill on one Firehawk just right out of the gate. Another Hammerhead, or another Harvester, is going to go down, and Bike Rush Owens has struck the throat of Green Zero. APCs are going to be the response from Green Zero, and the technology assembler still remains on the field. He's going for the upgraded power plant as well. If he gets the command post, it might just be lights out. It's lights out anyways as Green Zero barely brings the power back online, selling off a refinery in the south and relanding his Firehawks in the south as well. The Storm Riders turn to a different spot, trying to lead the APCs on a merry chase, and it's into red Rail guns, but rail guns don't shoot up, and Green Zero still is lacking in his anti-air. He's even going to be losing another Firehawk as he's looking for a place to land. I'm not sure what these guys are doing here. Four Firehawks show up, and four Firehawks go down. As no, only three of the Firehawks went down. The other one did survive, at least for a moment, to try and clear the skies, but it wasn't meant to be. Bike Rush Owens will maintain, it looks like, one Storm Rider, at least for now. A second Storm Rider joins his friend, and they're actually going to target down the Firehawk on the deck with a lightning spike as well. Bike Rush Owens. That's it. GG gets called, and Green Zero drops from the finals. Bike Rush Owens is your 2021 Championship Series champion. He takes home the $300 first place prize, and Green Zero putting up a great fight all throughout the tournament, only faltering in the finals, takes home $200. So a congratulations to those two guys showing some phenomenal games over the course of this tournament, and a great finals back and forth. Green Zero faltering a bit at the last game, but that will do it for this series, for this tournament. I hope you enjoyed it, and this is Cyber. Signing out.